Good morning, folks. For those who missed yesterday or who just have a short-term memory, here's the key part of yesterday's show. The only note up top in blue, Fiangle Fields pointing sun to earth. That's the coronal hole facing earth now, and that's a watch for excess magnitude seismic events for the next 48 hours. 20 hours later, magnitude 8, Peru. Luckily, it was 100 kilometers deep and the surface waves were lightened. It was preceded by at least five blot echoes on the west coast of the continent in the last 48 hours, which actually seemed to surround the region, leading up to the rupture. No tsunami because it was centered under land and, again, was so deep. Let's get to the sun and see only one tiny spot of brightness incoming on the north. There are no proper sunspots associated with it, but they could develop today. We're going to spaceweathernews.com. Find the coronal holes prominent and sliding through the Earth-facing heliographic longitudes here. Interplanetary fields from that coronal hole are streaming directly at our planet and connecting with the magnetic field. Its solar wind will arrive early next week and should actually be a bit more intense than the previous few streams. When we look at the solar wind now, we find the current stream to be very calm and relatively stable in intensity, speed staying under 400 kilometers per second in geomagnetic conditions, all quiet as well. Quick note on the storm set up to shatter records this evening, it is not the air mass convergence that exists here from overnight, but the one that will form on the eastern side of the Rockies later today when those pressure cells finally shift on. It will be sprite lightning conditions as tornado warnings almost certain to come this evening. Let's start the science serving with the subsurface sunspot spirals. In addition to sparking imaginative ideas about the underlying mechanics of the spots, they're saying that the oscillation at surface level is in the three minute range, meaning it is just a scale above the one to two minute oscillation pulse of the central axis current within the spiral, like a heartbeat. We have an outstanding bit of knowledge on key electric capacitance discharge accumulated in the surface due to the global electric circuit. It is different at different times of day and for the land versus the ocean. While the ocean has the peak release of energy around 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. local time, on land this is closer to 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. local time, which may be why that is when the storms fire up over the continents as we move towards sunset as opposed to the morning hours. An interesting note on translation time, transformation process time that is, for space weather energy coupled to the magnetic shield of Earth. In terms of how long that takes to produce appreciable effects on the ionosphere, which then begin to immediately affect the global electric circuit, here that time ranges from minutes to hours depending on things like phi angle of the solar wind that's impacting. One of the key actors on the global electric circuit is cosmic rays. One of the reasons they add to the circuit and help make clouds is because their ionization of particles helps create or indirectly trigger formation processes of aerosols. Just one cosmic ray particle cascades into thousands of others, and thousands of these are flying through each of us every second of the day. Over long periods, and over the volume of the atmosphere, they have major effects on cloud cover and global albedo. We know that the cosmic rays also trigger lightning, and the only now eliminated confusion to that fact was caused by similar triggerings during high solar activity, which have low cosmic rays. But we now know it's the same process in a way. When CMEs hit the Earth, the Van Allen Belt electrons surge down into the atmosphere, cascading outward and causing those same effects as if they were cosmic rays. That is a whole chapter section in our book, and here's an excellent paper on the sun-triggered side of things, rather than those cosmic rays. We end with plasma physics. At the closest range, Hannes Alfane identified that modern science is bafflingly off base, the magnetic field of Earth. We find another group pushing towards non-Maxwellian solutions to describe the velocity extremes of the ions. Here, we find the culprit to be the electric current density itself, point for Birkeland, Alfane, and Anthony Peratt. The understanding of the plasma in the electric currents and magnetic fields must come first, rule number one in the plasma universe. That book we mentioned, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, second edition, the evidence and explanations of how the sun controls the weather, long-term climate, technology, health, earthquakes, and more, only at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.